What's up guys, this is Alan. In today's episode, we are discussing what to do if you screw up. Yes, screw ups are going to happen, especially if you are in the service industry. A handyman, an electrician, a plumber, HVAC, whatever. You are going to make mistakes. Sooner or later, you will. Nobody's perfect. So today we are discussing how to deal with those screw ups. All right so, guys, so there are gonna be different categories of screw ups. There's gonna be that screw up where you give somebody an estimate and guess what, you're wrong and then you end up spend, spending more money. What are you gonna do? The second type of screw up is gonna be, well, uh, you make a mistake, you, you break something or you don't install something the right way. Uh, or, you know, or something that you did or didn't do that now you have to fix. What are you gonna do? And the ultimate screw up is going to be major screw up. Like you, you break something and then it's going to cost a lot of money to fix. What are you going to do? What are your options? Well, let's start with the easy one. Estimates. I know that that's gonna be the main one that you are going to be going through, especially if you are new in this industry because you don't know everything. If you guys don't know, I started my business without any experience. I didn't work for anybody else. I didn't go to school for this. I am self-taught. I'm the YouTube handyman. I learned most of the stuff actually on YouTube. There's great information on YouTube from professionals that are willing to actually show you how to do many things. And also, you know, for the things that you don't see on YouTube, you can pick up a book, plumbing electric book, and then you can read the code. You know, and that way you can do the things to code, and then as long as you follow that, you'll be okay. But anyway, self-taught, I just taught myself how to do everything. Because in this industry, it's all about the mindset. If you have the mindset that you know you can do it, you will do it. It may take you longer, big deal, but you are able to do it. Because this is not rocket science. It only takes a little bit of common sense. But anyways, you give somebody a wrong estimate, uh, you miscalculate uh, materials, and then you end up paying more money for materials. What do you do? Well, what I do personally is I eat the cost and I pay for the materials myself. I take it as a lesson learned and then once uh, that happens to me once, it never happens to me again. Uh, the way I see that is it's cheaper to pay for that than to go to college. Just do the math. I mean, go online and see how much they charge per credit hour. And most of those classes are junk anyways. You don't learn anything. So that's going to be the most common one that you're going to be facing. Uh, just screw ups on materials especially. So my recommendation is just pay for them and then don't make the same mistake again. It's going to happen, especially if you're new in this industry. Uh, the second type of screw up is, let's say you're doing a job. You gave somebody an estimate, like uh, doing drywall repair, okay? So you're repairing the drywall and as you're fixing it, you notice the drywall is soft and there's actually water damage inside the wall. So what do you do? You already gave the customer a price, but then you have tons of uh, water damage inside the wall because there's a leak somewhere. What do you do? Well, I can tell you what some people do. Some people will simply patch the wall, make it look nice, and get the money and take off. Now the patch, the wall is gonna last for a little bit depending on how bad the damage is. But if the, fix, uh, if the leak is not fixed, it's just gonna break again and then uh, it may be a month, it may be a year, but then the customer will remember you. And you know what? They will blame you. They will think that you are the one that caused the leak. So that's option one on what you may do. But I don't recommend that path because that's not honest. And then I believe in karma. It will come back to get you sooner or later. What I normally do is, let's say um, I'm fixing something and then I find something else. Like... Um, the uh, door jump repair that I did not too long ago, I actually got a video on it. When I gave this lady uh, an estimate, um, I didn't realize how much damage the door jam actually had 
I thought it was very minimal, superficial. It was going to be a quick fix. Uh, but it, it was actually more work than what I quoted because the main uh, job that I did was threshold replacement. But I did it anyways because I already gave her a price and even though it was more work, I just did it anyway. And stuff like that, my recommendation for you guys is just to just do it. Uh, you're learning a lesson. I guarantee you it's not going to happen again for you. And as long as it's not like extreme, just, just do it. Tell the customer about it and they will thank you and they will remember you forever. And don't forget about karma, guys. Good or bad, it will come back to you. Now, the way now that I avoid uh, problems like that is usually, let's say you are tearing up a wall because there was a leak. Very hard to estimate, right? So when you give the customer a price, you have two choices. You can give them a really high price to account for everything that may happen once you open that wall. You may have to replace electric, you may have to reframe the wall, you may have to redo the entire uh, drywall, you may have to do the trim, paint and everything. Make sure your quote reflects all that work. Option number two, when you give somebody the estimate, you can um, just give them an estimate for, you know, patching the wall, just like the customer wants. But also tell them that if, as you're patching or opening up the wall, if there is any water damage or electric or anything else, you make sure that your quote does not include any other repairs. Try to be as transparent with your customer as you can. I know it's going to be hard, especially if you don't have experience, but that will come with time. Don't worry about it. I learned. I know if I can learn, you will learn too. But try to tell your customer as much as you can what may happen or may not happen. So that way, if it does happen, then they know that they're going to be paying more money. Let me give you an example. Anytime I change a faucet, I do not touch a shut off valves. I will shut off the water outside, the main shut off for the entire house. And I tell them I do not touch them because I know in my experience, they tend to leak. And if they leak, I will not replace them free of charge. And I give them a price. So the price that I give them to change a faucet is going to be obviously less. But if they want me to change the uh, shadow valves, the price is going to be higher. So I give them a choice. But I also tell them if those things leak, I'm not responsible. And guess how I learned that? By making the mistake of touching the shadow valves and then they leak. And then guess what? I'm the one that touched them, I'm the one that caused the leak, even though they were old and they were bound to leak any time, I still replaced them free of charge. But I learned my lesson and I don't make those mistakes anymore, guys. So just be clear with your customer. Next type of screw up, guys. You're doing something in the house and uh, you break something. You know, you're moving uh, tools in and out and then you scratch the wall, you put a hole in the wall, you break a towel or something. What do you do? Well, you got two choices. Either you pay for it or you fix it yourself. There's no other choices. It's not the customer's fault. It is yours. You break something, you damage something, you install something incorrectly. It is your fault. You need to make it right. That's it. If you go any other way about it besides what I just told you, you will not be successful in this business. You may be able to get a little bit of money at the beginning, but long term, it's just not going to last for you. So you just make it right. Uh, and the last ultimate screw up, guys. Thankfully, this ha has, hasn't happened to me. But this one is going to cost more money than you can afford to pay. You know, um, you, you know, you fix a, a leak in a roof. And then you make the leak worse. And then you damage more stuff in the house. Or it goes unno unnoticed for many years. And then there's so much... Um, damage that is going to cost thousands and thousands of dollars to fix. Well, I mean, you can either fix it yourself if you can afford it or you can have insurance. If you're going to be if you're going to be in this industry, you need insurance. 
because you just never know whether you do good work bad work it doesn't really matter sooner or later I mean hopefully it never happens to me but something major may come up and you won't be able to cover the cost so you're gonna have to make an insurance claim you need backup guys this is why I always tell people charge what you are worth because there is a lot of liability in this business and if something happens you may lose everything that you work for your entire life so insurance is extremely important and you don't need to be licensed okay just letting you know that even unlicensed handyman out there can get uh, general liability insurance um, so that's my recommendation for you know if you're gonna be in this industry long term just get insurance especially if you do any work that involves water that's gonna be the major one that you're gonna be facing but anyways guys that's how I do business that's how I deal with screw-ups and uh, hopefully this was uh, educational for you if you have any questions as always comment below don't forget to like the video subscribe and I will see you next time